gentlemen, welcome to the Shelley Tasker Show here, coming out of CornwallRevolutionRadio.blogspot.com. It's good to have your company. It's been a, an awesome week. Um, if you'd like to link, join in with the live chat, please click on the live chat room link at the top right-hand side of your screen, just below the player of your choice. Today's date is Wednesday, the 11th of November. Hosting along myself are Charlie Rainbow and Neela Eilertson. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. Hi. And tonight we have a total change of guests. We were expecting Jackie Devoy, however, she's got a few problems and can't make it. But every cloud has a silver lining, and we are blessed with the Honourable Darren Smith. Good evening, Darren. Good evening, Shelley. How are you doing? How are you doing, girls? Hi. Yeah, we're good, thanks. Thank you so much for coming on short notice. It's, um, it's a real privilege. And th there's so much I need to know about you. <laughs> oh. We, we mainly know you for your writing of the light newspaper and for your song, but obviously that um, you go way deeper than a newspaper and a song. <laughs> Actually, that's, that sounds a bit bad because <laughs> songs, music, yeah. singing, very deep. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, I'm babbling. I'm excited. It's been a funny sort of week. So um, can, can you tell us a little bit, Darren, when did you, how long have you been awake for? Oh, that's a great, that's a great question, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, first of all, um, my, my name's Darren Nesbitt, or Daz Nes for short. So if anybody's searching for me for the song, mm. um, it's it's under Daz Nes usually on, on, online. Um, I use Darren Smith for Facebook. And I've been awake for seven or eight years. And it was a really weird, compressed journey that I had. Um things kind of got prepared in, in the previous few years and then all of a sudden I got all the downloads within you know a few months uh, in 2013 and you know and uh, everything else has been documented I think really <laughs> okay thanks for the interview <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's great thanks let's have a look on YouTube see ya <laughs> <laughs> so when did you write that amazing song that we all sing. It wasn't long after. It wasn't long after I woke up. Um, uh, you know, certainly within within a year. Um, uh, you know, I yeah. I mean, I don't know if I, I, I'm waiting to hear other artists. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard that there's a great uh, spoken word guy, and um, but it's just a, a huge release of energy for, for me as well. A huge release of creative energy for me as well. You know the. Everybody knows the emotions that you go through, the amazing realizations, you know, the the, the anger and the fear uh, and the and the joy and everything else. Um, and you know that 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 drop, that oh my word, I was right to question everything. I was right to you know all my life, I was right to question why there's war, why there's poverty, why there's all those things. You know, it's not just like you know this this is the way things are. Um, and like I say, with that, with huge, huge release of energy, I've got you know dozens and dozens of songs. Uh, I keep trying to play them at um, all the rallies and marches and what have you. But uh, everybody's like, yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, play, <laughs> play, play the song. <laughs> oh, so so it's not a new song then. It's one that you wrote quite a while ago then, about seven years ago. Yeah, it's about seven years old. Ah, well, it's new to us. And do you know it's um. I say at the moment, I think lots of us people that are awake, we, we seem to be aligned very well with each other. And um, yeah. when we went into lockdown, I started learning the guitar. And one of the first songs I learned was She'll Be Coming Round the Mountain When She Comes. <laughs> yeah, well, it was only like a couple of months ago, I twigged and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> it, it's the same tune. Exactly. Uh, because I was originally thinking that if I learned a few songs like that that people could sing along to, then when I was working in the hospital wards, we could have a bit of a sing song and cheer everybody up. Sing anyway, man. as it would be, you wrote that song and, um, well, everyone sings it, don't they? <laughs> I, I've even been teaching it to my seven-year-old and um, we'll sit here and have a sing song of it. And I mean, it must have... When, when did you um, hit big with that song then? When would you say that came what? out? Um, it got it. You know what? Over the years, it's just gone in phases. As people have discovered it, and and you know, it's gone shared and gone, you know, mini viral or what have you. Um, and it's still, 
you know, it's still at the stage now. I mean, it's getting to the stage now where, where it, you know, it's becoming quite a, a reasonably well-known folk song, you know, a modern folk protest song. Modern folk, yeah. <laughs> um, but I think we still need to, you know, we, we still want to kick it, kick it over the line there. So we have done a recording of it. Um, uh, we've done the basic tracks. It's being tracked up, I believe, now. Um, and we're hopefully going to make a video and hopefully going to release it. Um, uh, hopefully at the start of December, so we can people can try and get it to number one if they so desire. Um, and you know, and it's weird because obviously I've been a musician, songwriter all my life, and, and of course you want to have a want to have a, 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 you know, a career or, or certainly a big record, big tune, and it's great. But my my goal is it, it, it's you know the, the only reason I want it to go to number one is so. People that are asleep going, what the fuck is this guy on about? My <laughs> well, if you need people in the so queue, we, we're, we're all, all, we're all free. Three of us will go in there. <laughs> For backing singers. Yeah. yeah. That's wow. That's right. Well, we're going to, well, we're, we're, hopefully we're going to record the crowd at um, at up, upcoming, upcoming protests before the end of the, before the end of the month and, and add, add it in, hopefully. Well, I, don't, I don't know how that. I don't know how it's going to work, but people are going to make it happen. Well, obviously, you know, at all the rallies now, people go around singing that song, and I don't think you've probably listened to our radio show each week. But since the first episode, we ended the evening with the last two verses of that song, <laughs> <laughs> and we do it every week. And I'm, you know, oh, there was one time when Charlie and Nina weren't here, and I had to sing it by myself. I did oh, feel no. like a bit of a wally, but um. <laughs> That's how we end the show every week. So oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great to hear. So th- there's an idea for your video. Um, yeah, we could just be sat in front of a computer singing. <laughs> 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 so, what is the the title of the actual song? Um, again, for years it's been "Stick Your New World Order Up Your Ass," but if we're going to do a a release of it, um, it's going to be called <laughs> it's going to be called "We Are the Ninety Nine Percent." Not that it matters, because obviously, you know. Yeah. That's with, a really within, song, within the first line, we're swearing and we're, and we're, and we're, you know, we've gone over the censorship line, I suppose. Right, right. But, um, but, but yeah, we we are the we are the ninety nine percent. I think it's um, I, th- I think it's more 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 a sensible title. Yeah, and we really are the ninety nine percent as well. Yeah. Yeah, people that seem to survive the Corumba virus. <laughs> Corumba, not <laughs> So, um, yeah, and it's funny because I, I did see you um, obviously in London a few weeks ago when my friend Jo was um, smoozing up to you. Um, she has to do that to everyone we want to talk to. <laughs> She's very good at it. And then I came up and I was like, oh, will you come up and be on the radio show? And you're like, yeah. And anyway, so the other night we're talking about guests and then Jo says, what about Darren? And I'm like, who's Darren? And she's like, you know, Darren. Um, so, she, so she says, and I had no idea that you were the creator of the Light Truth paper. It's just like, where does your hmm. talent end? Oh, I, I'm just, uh, I, it's just energy though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> have, having the energy to do it. And there's no way I'd be able to do the light paper without a, I mean, I mean, obviously the, the, the enthusiasm and support of everybody. Yeah. You know, from, you know, the, the distribution guys, everybody wants to distribute, everybody wants to, you know, just get involved and, you know, whether it's, art, whether it's an article or proofreading or what have you, but, and, and the core team that I've got, now, which I, you know, it's really weird because I never did a business plan. Because if I, I, I keep saying if I, if I'd ever written, written down exactly all the things that I'd have to do to to get this thing off the ground and make it a reality, I would never have, I would never have att- attempted it. Um, and also, right, what I need is a really great team of admin people that could take care of this, that, and the other, and, and all that, you know. And okay, well, you know, let, let's put adverts in the in in you know in the in the job centre, in the online job centre, um, and you know, hopefully the the, the 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 right people will come along right at the right time. And again, that's happened. You know what I mean? Without obviously, you know, doing doing anything like that at all, just through social media, social media connections, and people going, "Hey, I'll help you with that. Hey, I can do that. Hey, I, you know what I mean, etc., etc." Et and it's just all come together. So it would maybe it's one of those things. It's meant to be, whether you believe it's the universe or God or or what have you. Um, uh, if it, if it wasn't meant to be, it would have, you know what I mean. Although there were there were huge obstacles to get over, um, if it wasn't meant to be, it wouldn't have happened, uh, and or it would have happened, and people would have just gone, yeah, it's not really that interesting, uh, <laughs> and not and not responded. But 
you know, it's 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 just exploded. I mean, obviously the Richie Allen interview um, certainly helped. He's got a, a, a you know, I, I didn't realize what a huge reach uh, he's got. Uh, and uh, but but I think that you know, people just like the concept itself. And and when I came back to social media uh, over the summer um, to you know get active online again, um, um, kind of said. Sorry, I've lost my train of thought. It's all right. <laughs> try to, I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm trying to do 17 points at once. Mm, no, that's all right. Take it to nine. Um, God, I've lost a train of thought now as well. <laughs> that that makes... Mm. That sounds awful. Well, how long have you actually been doing the light newspaper then? Well, our third issue. So only, you know... Oh, months. it's only a recent thing? Months. A few months. Or August. Oh. August time. It was... Uh, yeah, it was... Or August time, I think, something like that. You can't actually tra- trace it back on the timeline because uh, I think the first notion of it was when I, I put out a post saying if if you were if you wanted you know if if you were going to do a newspaper that only told the truth, what would you call it? Um, um, so I suppose that was that was the kind of that was the first kind of public birth of it. Right. Uh, I'm not sure when that was. Is what I'm saying to be honest. Mm-hmm. So it, it's only a few months. Uh, I've got absolutely no training in journalism or being a paper editor or anything else. Um, but uh, you know, there was a, I suppose, a mission, uh, you know, an unwritten mission statement of the news that we all know and um, that that we see in our in our social media networks. Um, I, this is where I was going before when I lost my train of thought. We're sandboxed online. When I came back to um, I came back to social media this time, um, you know, to like I said, be, be an activist. It was a case of there's no point in a lot of people were posting, um, you know, wake up, stop wearing your mask, don't take the test, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you're only posting to people that already know that. We're not posting to the outside world. So social media is really great for connecting and sharing information. Um, but it's making absolutely subtle difference in terms of waking people up or, or get or getting the truth out there. Somebody scrolling COVID nineteen eighty four on a you know on, on a motorway what have you, it does does far more. It reaches far more people. Um, no, I'm saying saying to people go and scroll on motorways or you know what have you. But but you know you know what I'm saying. So so for me it was it was what what can we do offline? Um, and it started with flyers. Uh, obviously, and there's lo- loads of people doing flyers, and it's great. We, you know, you, you you always need something at you know r- rallies and marches and what have you. Um, you know, to hand to to hand to the the public, uh, and to get a conversation going. Um, and and the paper, the idea of the paper just kind of grew from that. Is obviously, you know, it's it's a gazillion flyers, you know, all all, all, all at once. Um, you know, every every month in in a new in a, in a format that um, you know, the outside world. The outside world, you know what I mean? The normal world, the sleeping world, but those that still watch the broadcast news every evening and believe take it as gospel, um, in a format that they 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 they're used to, but obviously the content itself is, you know, um is news. I mean I don't I don't I don't want it to be, you know, mad conspiracy theories and, and all the rest of it. I just want it to be the news that's happening in the UK, you know, like legislation that the government are passing and what it really means. Um obviously things that the, the pharmaceutical companies are up to, et cetera, et cetera. All the news that, that we know about, we all hear, we all share, but but the rest of the world don't and, and it's simply putting that in a newspaper. It was <laughs> it really it really is as simple admission as that. Mm. Yeah, no, it's lovely. I've been, I've got a few here to give out, actually. I always take some of our local um, distributors. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I could do more, actually, and uh, go and haul the streets. It's a brilliant idea. Um, so you also, you also do a, a truth conspiracy, have I written that down? Truth conspiracy clothing company as well? Yeah, it's just, I mean, yeah, okay, yeah. I've got, it's a shop. I do the, I do the designs. Um, you know, um, it's, it's, it's not, a, it's not a major thing. Um, but yeah, I do, I do, I do some t-shirt designs again, you know, truth, truthwear.uk if anybody's interested. Right. Okay. We can plug that to you. <laughs> um, so, cause you're an artist, performing arts, songwriter as well. So you've been doing this, uh, a long time then, obviously. The, the, the song, the song of writing and all that. Yeah. For, um, most, most of my adult life, I'd say 30 odd years. Right. Uh, do you mind me asking, are you married? I'm not, no, I'm single. <laughs> <For> a friend. <laughs> no, I'm just being nosy, actually. Yeah, no, that's fine. So, and no children? No children. No. 
So literally your days and nights at the moment are um, like so many others, I presumed, looking up what's going on and, well, doing your newspaper and writing stuff and trying to stay active. How far how far is your newspaper reaching? Uh, you know, is, is it across the UK yet or is it in diff a couple of areas? We've sent copies to Ireland and Portugal and Switzerland and Scotland and uh, America. Oh, wow. And all uh, of the UK, isn't it, through distributors? Yeah, um, uh, yeah. I think they're making connections up to Scotland even as well. But it certainly it goes into Wales. It goes, you know, and it goes all over, all over, uh, all over the, the the mainland, all over England anyway, and into Northern Ireland a bit as well. Um, but yeah, the distribution network covers covers the whole of England. But um, yeah, I mean, we're still we're still looking for more distributors. We still want it to grow. Um, right now, uh, issue three, sixty thousand. 60,000 copies which is you know it, it, it sounds like a lot but if you compare it to you know a million or two million or, or whatever it is the Daily Mail do yeah. um, you know uh, we, we've still got a long way we've still got a long way to go so um, you know but, but, but bit by bit yeah you know. are you based in the UK me personally At the light paper yes wicked wow so, so what have you been doing um, apart from your singing and stuff? Have you been in, been to some good rallies in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, it's it's our social, it's our re, it's our re, real life social network, isn't it? Oh my god, it is. Yeah, we it's get great. to sing, we get to socialize. Mm. Yes, 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 and and and, and yeah. nobody else does. They have to stay in their houses and and go to you know go to the big box retailers and and then you know go to the park and go home. Whereas we get to hang out with everybody and be normal and social and social human beings, um, which is great. And you know, I, I was just thinking because you you do you do you know you on the feeds you do get people saying protesting is a waste of time. You know, you're not changing anything, etc. etc. And I I don't think there's anybody really there. I've I've met on, I, at most protests and, and rallies and marches over the last you know since since the summer since since May really. I don't think anybody's really trying to change the government's mind in any way. I don't think anybody's expecting. Nobody goes on these things going right. We're going to change the. You know, we're, we're going to stop it now. We're going to, you know, we're going to change everything. And I don't think that's what I don't think that's what they're about. You know, I don't think that's the. That's, it, those aren't the reasons I go. I go to meet people. I go to connect with people in real life. Obviously, you connect with loads of people on social media, so you can meet people in real life. And um, obviously, if I'm a performer, it makes sense to it makes sense to you know go and perform a lot at, at, at these things. A bit harder when you're marching along, but we can still do it with megaphones. And um, uh. Obviously, the, the the uplift it gives you as well. So if if, if you know if you have, because I tell you what, there's so many people have woken up this year, um, and it's it's almost doubled the amount of awake, awake people it feels like, which is which is you know obviously great. Um, but as I know, there's a lot of awake people that are still online that haven't been to you know protests and, and, and rally. I can't, I can't stop calling them protests, but you know events, rallies, marches, what have you. Um, and you know you should really go because the the it's the comradeship it's the it's the um, you know like I say the connection the networking um, you know and just having a gazillion people or thousands of people in one place all saying you know we want our freedom back and we we reject all 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 government measures we are still yet to see proof in fact we've seen proof that the the there is no pandemic. Um, and you know, look at us, general public. We are completely normal, mask-free, and um, you know, you too can be as free like us. You too can be a human, not a slave. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, sorry, carry on. I was thinking that last time I was there that it just gave like um, it was just so good to be there to kind of like recharge my batteries to kind of feel like yes. um, yeah, there's like more, yeah. yeah, it does that uplifting thing, doesn't it? It's been with like-minded yeah. people. That's isn't it, it? Yeah. The, the last one we went to, we marched. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, we did, it was the March, the last big one in London, mm. wasn't it? Yeah. And um, that was just, oh, what a feeling. Yeah. yeah. And I, I know people say, like, oh, protests don't work. And, but I have got to disagree there to a point because I think everybody's there doing their live feeds. If we're not doing that, yeah. the BBC certainly aren't yeah. reporting it. So yeah. people were seeing that we're kicking up a fuss. Yeah. Um, because you know, my, my daughter said to me, oh, why do you live stream it? Why don't you just enjoy the atmosphere? It's like, no, because it's my duty. <laughs> yeah. To draw people in and see what's happening, mm. yeah, you know, 
Um, it, it is awesome. hope, doesn't it, as well? That yeah, it does. it does. And they might go next time. And it makes them aware of what's going on. Everything we do has an effect. And there are certain people who will do one part of it and they'll say, oh, no, the other things don't, the other things don't work. And I just think that's probably based from the ego. I think everything you do towards this goal has yeah. an effect. You know, it's just about moulding each effect, like the effect you did with your the, the light newspaper. You know, that has an effect. You, you're going to get those in through the doors and, you know, people can be re reading it. There's going to be more consciousness to do with that. I, I've got my own little gig that I'm doing. Other people have got their own little, um, well, me, me and Nina have. We've, everybody's got their own little gigs that all together, I think it makes mm. it massive, doesn't yeah, it, really? Yeah. Me and Charlie wanted to go door to, like, where we want to do, like, at least a day a week going door to door with the papers. But I did speak to one one of the, you know, I emailed the email for the truth paper and she said that there aren't really enough to do that at the moment. And I, that um, made me think of the next question, which is, like, how do you get the funding? How are you funding it at the moment? Because it would be so amazing, wouldn't it, to get as many papers out as yeah, the Daily definitely. Mail and then put them through people's doors. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that, 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 that's... I think that's general advice still, um, possibly with, um, you know, because there's still loads of garages and supermarkets and, you know, whatever, lo loads of other places. Again, you know, you think it's 60,000, it's like, yeah, that, you know, that, that's a lot, or 200 papers or 50 papers or what have you, but, you know, the, the, <clears throat> they can suit, they'll we'll soon go, and the idea obviously is to spread it, spread it far and wide. However, you know, lots of businesses are closed, so if people are putting them indoors, that's, that's you know. That, that's the way it goes and as long as it's getting read at the end of the day you know what i mean the goal is to the goal is to uh, get the truth out there uh, in terms of funding it's a complete mix of uh, donations uh, absolute you know generosity of of uh, activists out there people that again want to help want to make a difference uh, obviously uh, advertisers uh, again if you've got uh, i mean you know if you've got um uh, if you've got a business you want to advertise in, in the paper, get in touch. Um, and um, what's the other one? Subscriptions as well. Again, you can sub, sub, subscribe on so, our... Sorry, so, if, you, if you've got a business, you, you can advertise in the paper? Yes, in the light, yes. What happens if you haven't got a business, but you've got a little project? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking! If I'm taking course. my opportunities. What does that, what does that mean? <laughs> I mean, she wants something for free. No, 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 no. Pay, paying, but but I, I'm just asking because it's I, I'm... not a business. It's um a, a film, Mark and Marshall. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah I'm I'm paying. Paying. That's, just, that's what it's about, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's a film. A I'm just asking for a friend. Yeah, they'll, they'll do anything for money. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, it's, it's <laughs> okay. reason. We, we, all, we all get to a million copies, so you know. yeah. The project uh, is um to do with spreading the truth anyway so yeah exactly. yeah, yeah 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 lots of um, yeah. great minds mm, yeah um i have got a question here what do you think about the usa election darren do you think trump will win oh it's so exciting all the trump stuff isn't it yeah but it's still a just a it's just a it's just a stage show mm. <laughs> i don't care i've got to say i just don't i don't yeah. care <laughs> i'm sorry it's, it's, it's only the same only in the same way that i don't care what happens on coronation street or <laughs> I, although i do i do i did care what happened at the end of breaking bad or the sopranos or whatever <laughs> you know what i mean i am I'm, I'm only interested in 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 in, in as far it doesn't matter you know what i mean anybody that's you know everybody that's listening knows no president no prime minister uh, makes any decisions of any consequence whatsoever yeah. complete lackeys yeah. uh, yes they have their own personality yes they have their own thing and you know people say well trump trump's a good, and he might well be a good guy with good intentions i don't know but he spent four years not doing a single thing about the federal reserve or you know oh he didn't start any new wars yeah but he didn't any any of the old ones etc etc you know the, the whoever's in office is in office because they're supposed to be in office by the people who control everything so you know uh, no politician is going to save us nobody that gets all the way to the presidency can, can say imagine what you could do if you were if you were president you know you go through the nominated powers of the things that they can do um and and, and, and just with all that <laughs> just with all that attention and everything, you know what I mean. The, the, the amount of truths you could drop, the amount of, you know what I mean. The, the amount, of, the amount, of, uh, the amount of um, minds you could change, 
um, you know, with, with, within that time frame, you know, say imagine what you could do in it and look what, what look what he's actually done. Uh, is Biden a complete, uh, a com- uh, you know, a senile, paedophile, corrupt, um, you know, bag of bones, you know, an empty suit with with Kamala Kamala Harris waiting in the wings? Yes, probably. You know what I mean? But, but you know, we've, we've got more pressing, we've got more pressing. Um, things to concern us, you know, such yeah. as a, a rogue, a rogue fascist government, which is trying to implement, you know, rules and regulations and laws, which the policy offices seem to seem to be following, and um, which are obviously taking away our, our freedoms. And, and we can all unite on that, you know, whether you're Trump, Trump Biden, don't care, green, red, yellow, whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. home, isn't it, really? And it- it's true, I should probably be watching more stuff about it here than America, but I am very excited by it. But what, what do you see it as a way forward then? What do you think is going to happen to good old Boris? Do you think there's going to be some arrests made? Yeah, well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, you know, we've got to remember that these people, and you can go back thousands of years, but let's just, let's just keep it to the modern 240, 40 odd years <laughs> um, that they've been going for, that they, they, they made a plan you know, with the banking system and, and, you know, manipulating wars and currencies and economies and the world and all the rest of it um, to put themselves in the position that they are now where they've got a stranglehold on media and information, education systems and, you know, everything, all, all the all, all, all assets, but all facets virtually of human or all, all human human life. Um, so it's not going to be it's not going to be bowled over by, you know, by by. By one thing for a start, by one person or one action or one uh, one group or one you know one particular event. Although there might be one you know one you know one one trigger event on top of the uh, the, the gazillion things that we're already doing. You know that everybody's already doing. Um, and it's like it's like somebody was saying before, um, it, it, it will take all of us doing all our things. You know, so yeah, I'm doing the paper and and, and you know we'll, we'll do the song and and, and all the rest of it. Um, and you know, and, and and everything else that we do, and, and everybody does what do, does what they do. In the end, we don't need a political party. We don't need a new political party. We don't need a. Um, we're not we're not going to need um, you know a revolution. <laughs> we don't need to. We don't need to go and you know go and attack, go and you know in, invade, occupy Downing Street or any of that stuff. Um, I mean, it might, might might be fun to do that anyway, but um, as long as it's peaceful. Um, but all we need to do is change people's minds, just like just like you, you know. Once you're asleep, now you're awake. You know how how does that happen? It's different for everybody. Um, we all get absolutely frustrated in, in when trying to wake people. But look at this. But look at this. Look at the evidence. Look at and they won't. You know what I mean? And you know we've all dealt. I think we've all dealt with it. And it always gets always gets frustrating. And we can all go, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not doing it anymore. And then you know, and then you remember that, that this isn't. A, it's not a film. It's not a fiction. You're not reading a book. It's this is this is real life. It's really happening. You know, and and we need to save our future. Um, freedom really is worth fighting for. And we've got to. Um, and we've got to do everything we can. But it's again, it's it's again, it's working smart, not hard. It's not you know putting our head against the wall or trying to, or trying to raise an army or trying to start a political party or any of this. And you think, oh, you need to do is 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 change one person's mind or or because again, not not many people do that from from start to finish. Um, but you know, sowing a seed or a bit of watering or a bit of harvesting, you know. Um, and and that's how that's how it works people just imagine if everybody stops complying imagine if everybody has the same attitude that you have i'm not afraid one little bit of you know the a police fine or being arrested or um you know or you know driving during the lockdown or whatever the hell you know just going about my business you know i'm, I'm not i don't have fear in my heart and, and i presume neither do you um and if everybody has that attitude, it, it's over. You know what I mean? They can they can stand up and and give all the edicts they want, but everybody ignores it. You know, even even if the cops, you know, wanted to enforce it, they just couldn't because everybody's business is open. Everybody's you know playing in the park. Everybody's just doing the thing, you know. And that's where we want to get to. Um, yeah. Do we need can we, do we need a whole mass awakening? No, you only need to get to, you know, whatever it is eight percent ten percent twelve percent of people just enough so that virtually everybody has somebody in the circle going and it's all bollocks you know mm-hmm. what i mean and and not somebody in the circle but there's loads of people you know the, you know four five six people who are, who and then it just it it'll just you know it'll just uh, snowball from there yeah yeah there's a certain point of awakening where it will it will just snowball on it it's, that's yeah. just about 
it's about getting to that level. Because <clears throat> there's some people that I would consider blue pills who have done things like there was um on Facebook there was a story that I put up about someone who got fined um, in the UK two hundred pounds for going over to someone ha- someone's house for a brew, and an, um, a, a family member <clears throat> reposted that, and it it just it just brought up attention because they've never ever done anything like that before. And it just, you wouldn't never repost it unless you thought that, that that thing was daft. So it kind of like people are starting to wake up and somebody else posted something else that was on, um, uh, I think somebody put, put um, something on the, the street and they'd noticed that and they started questioning about the red pill stuff and started to see little bits from the other side. And I thought they were originally, so people are starting to, Mm-hmm. I'm noticing certain things. I don't know. How, what's your experience? Do you see that, or is it is it not there in your experience yet? What, what with people starting to wake up? You mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... You said it doubled. You think it's doubled in last this year, don't you? The amount of people have awakened. Yeah, that's the original. That's the original ones. I'm, I'm talking more. Are you noticing people that are, have been blue pilled mm. for for all? last seven eight months that are now starting to Mm -hmm. or not uh i don't know i only hang around with red pill people oh i was gonna say um obviously that the last few weeks and the last week in particular i've had a lot of hate but i've had a lot of love as well and i've been wound with messages people saying thanks you've made my friends see that you know there's a different side and it's, if we can get now, I'm thinking um, we've got Louise Hampton on after you, Darren, and um, yeah. she's going to tell her story about how she had to leave the NHS and stuff. But it, just imagine if people just started speaking out, mm. and they are speaking out. Um, yeah. You know, and people go on to there, they're like, oh, they're lying. And when they call you a liar, they're just filled with fear because the truth really does hurt them. They, they cannot stand the thought that their dear government is having them over a barrel, really. And like you say, when you lose that fear and you're not worried about getting arrested, doing this, that and the other, you're just living in a whole different way, aren't you? Yeah. And it's a lot nicer way to it's a lot nicer way to live without that, you know, whatever you call it, that little, that hot, that lock or that or that heavy weight on your heart. Um, you know, but it, it's a clear sign of cult programming. Yeah. You you we won't hear anything bad about our leaders. Yeah, our leaders would never do that to us. Our leaders are looking, trying. Our leaders are looking after us. They're doing the best in difficult circumstances. Yes, they're incompetent. Yes, they're all telling. They're telling us to wear masks now, and when a mask is obviously useless. You know what I mean? So, you know, the, 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 you know, Stockholm syndrome, isn't it? Apparently. Um. No, but no. Well. I think it's worth, like I say, it's, it's more cult. It's more, more like a cult. It's more oh. like a, it's more like a religious cult. Mm, yeah. you know, Stockholm Stock syndrome. The, the victim knows that they've been, you know, I, I, I know this is my kidnapper. You know what I mean? But, but, they, but they develop that relationship with them, um, with whatever the hell is, you know, clinical psychologists call call this, um, mass hypnosis, or mass cult programming, um, um. The, the victims, i.e. the general public, don't know. They're completely unaware that they've been indoctrinated into a cult, but they are in a cult because they have, you know, they're, they're given rituals and they're given rules to follow. Uh, and, you know, obviously it doesn't matter how absurd or insane they are or how illogical. Uh, and like I say, exactly what you just, you know, relating back to, to what you just said, um, our leaders can do no wrong. They'll <laughs> look at man, Matt Hancock and some somehow see, you know, a good person. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> makes you laugh but again it's a sign of it's a sign of the obvious hypnosis again i don't know because people know the government are evil or they don't know they're evil but the, the government are bad and the and the you know and, and the you know the the they're incompetent and the and the wasteful and the this that and the other and the, and the you know and they're a bit thievy and they're a bit lying and they're a bit rapey uh, but it's the government, so what can you do you know we voted for them you know they, I, they can't see another way so yeah. again Again, it's down to us to, to you know, it's the old Buck, Buckminster Fuller quote to, to build the new, to make the old look obsolete. And that's more in terms of an attitude, you know, towards towards life, towards the whole thing. You know what I mean? Yes, I'm not scared of a pandemic. I'm not scared. I'm not scared of a pandemic. I'm not scared of fines. I'm not scared of, you know, being arrested either because I'm not doing I'm not committing any crime. You know, that kind of thing. 
do you um, follow common law? Or do you think that that is the way forward? It's part of it. Yeah. It's it's part it's part of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it, it, it yeah, it feels like it's all kind of rolled into one in, in an attitude of um, obviously obviously defiance to to fascist tyranny. Um, but what, but you know, one of more noble ideas of, of freedom and community, and you know, and uh, and fair trade, you know, free, free, real free and fair trade, which clearly we haven't got. You know, I mean, people rail against oh, the capitalist system. It's not a capitalist system. It's a real. It's a genuinely fascist system where the state, um, you know, corporate welfare they call it, but the state you know, obviously supports its 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 favoured businesses by allowing them to stay open. Um, and if you're a small, medium business, uh, you know, no, yeah. no, no, no dice for you. Cause, you know, if you want to control the whole world and have a cashless, cashless society, then yeah. you need, you need your, you know, your core, mega corporations to be in charge of all resources and all products and all services. And then you can switch people on and off at mm. will. Yeah. Mm. It is fascinating how people are just so controlled, isn't it? Asleep. Uh-huh. <laughs> asleep and a controlled and just there's no um no reasoning with them um i was chatting to brian gerish gerish yesterday and we, we did an interview but we had a chat afterwards and he was telling me about all these things because I, I never knew he was in the navy yeah uh, and so i mean he's, he's a fascinating guy but he was telling me about something called like diversion activities that they do in the police force and stuff like that how they work and how these people come out after they've done courses and they're just totally different people. Right. They've been brainwashed, but without realising mm, that they've yeah. been brainwashed. Yeah. You know, um, well, that seems to be exactly what's happening to the general public at the moment, doesn't it? Yes. It is, yeah. It's, it's really weird, mm. like living, in, like when you wake mm. up, it feels like you're living in an insane asylum. And it's like, okay. I think we need, to, the most important thing for us at the moment is staying sane, isn't it? Not staying safe. Yeah, I don't yeah. ever say stay safe. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I say stay active. <laughs> yeah, very, very important. And again, you know, that, that, that you know, we're, we're virtually out ev- ev- every week. I mean, you can go out every week, every weekend now to to, to some event near you, which I want to mention actually before I forget. I'm coming down to, not quite. I know, I know it's, I know it's still another few hours if, if to get to Cornwall, but I'm coming down to Bristol on the weekend. I know there's going to be a, a a decent rally, a decent rally down there. So I'm coming down to play a few tunes. Oh, brilliant. So right. anybody, anybody that's in Bristol over the, on Saturday, I shall hopefully see. I'm coming down with a couple of um, councillors who are speaking out. Oh, yes, very interesting. Mm. Oh, it's so more, more and more, more and more are doing that. I mean, we just, you know, it's just building the pressure. It's just keeping yeah. the pressure on. I, uh, I made a, I made an analogy a few months ago about you know like cricket or you can say chess or, or what have you. But you know, it's keep keeping the pressure on. Keep keep you know keep them keep them on the toes you know but it's not them like i say it's not them we're not trying to change the government's mind we're just trying to change the people's minds and get them to get them to see that they're in a cult get them to you know know that they have been brainwashed you know Uh, uh, in whatever way we could do that yeah ah that's a question are you a chess player (laughs) i am i love playing chess absolutely me too maybe we should play sometime (laughs) Even on even online. Oh yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. So oh, it's just slipped my mind. What's it? So also, am I right that you've been rounded up to come to Cornwall in a few weeks' time? Oh, I have. I have. <laughs> I didn't know about that. You, you, has she hassled you? Has she booked you? Say again. Has she hassled you? Has she booked you? Who's that? Joe. No, and I, yeah, but thanks for reminding me. I do, I do have to give Joe Wood a, sh- a shout out. Hi, Joe. Thanks for uh, thanks for <laughs> connecting. Um, no, uh, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I um, yeah, I'm not, I'm all the way in Manchester. It's a long way to come. So as long as long as as long as there's a lift and somewhere to stay, probably. Yeah, yeah, we'll sort that out. Don't you worry. Sure. <laughs> yeah, and I'll be playing chess somewhere in the daytime with you, love. Yes, good time for that. Chess, chess, chess is more of a night. Chess is, unless, unless you're on a unless you're on an anti-fracking camp, which in case you just play play all day. Um, chess, chess is definitely a nighttime a nighttime um, activity. <laughs> with a, with a bit of wine, isn't it? Wine, scotch, and oh, oh, and four back leather chairs. Sorry, sorry, just carry on. Don't worry. <laughs> so there is another question um, I will ask. Um, ask 
Darren about his fracking days and how their group I... managed to stop the government. Uh... I didn't know you did fracking. I don't know hardly anything about you. Um, Ask Giza. It's all coming out now. So was you working with Giza, was you? No. Um, well, I say no. You know, we were, we were, he's, obviously he's, he's, he's Blackpool based and Manchester. So I was, um, I was down at the Barton Bar- Bar- Moss anti-fracking camp. Uh, mostly in 2013, 2014. And then we went to a place called Crowborough Hill over in East Yorkshire. Um, and you know, there were various ones. Um, what stopped, what, what, what was the question again? <laughs> how, did stop, you, yeah, how, was it, how did he stop the government? So no, oh. hang on. Oh. Ask him about his fracking days and how they managed to stop the government. In all, fair, in all fairness, the government stopped because of the earthquakes, you know, um, I mean, obviously, there's there was there's obviously public public pressure there um, all the time, um, and um, you know, you know, again, you know, we did our bit, you know, we did our bit. Uh, locals were slow walking lorries, you know, day after day. Um, cops, cops, gloves in your back, uh, and it, I, but it's good. At the end of the day, you you, 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 you know, we learnt we learnt the tactics of the cops. We learnt the different you know units and all the rest of it. Um, you know. <laughs> We went where all the cop shops are in Manchester because we went and protested outside them every day when people got arrested. <laughs> so it was a, it's a full day. It's a full time job being an activist. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, which every, every, everybody notices. Like, how the hell did I how, how did I manage a full time job before? Um, so, you know, a combined effort because people all over the country were oh, rightly concerned, um, uh, uh, obviously about the dangers of fracking. Um, so people power, people, mm. pe- people power at the end of the day, um, you know, that and that just the, the same way you stop everything. Being honest, you know, most people in Britain are not political, you know, we haven't been political for a long time. Yeah, if you were in a trade union, perhaps, um, and you know, for certain, you know, for certain, um, specialist causes, but. You know, because because it's just two major political parties. If you if you if you're political, you 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 join the Conservative or, or Labour parties. Um, but you know, it's that never appealed. Even when I was asleep, it's just never ever appealed at all. And and again, now you're awake, you know why? Because um, again, doesn't matter which you join, you're going to be carrying out the globalist agenda. So, um, you know, we're we're, we're for freedom. So, um, but but it's got us political. Um, and especially again the, the the COVID hoax this year, it's got people active. It's got people politically active. You know, emailing their MPs, getting involved, watching legislation. Imagine if we'd all been doing that for the last twenty five, thirty years. Oh, I know. I, I think it's massive. I mean, I, I know like all all the people that I follow on Facebook and stuff. Um, they're all posting your rights and the legalities of it all and. I don't, I don't seem to see many fluffy posts at the moment. I know. You know? Were you out for tea? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, people are really up their game, aren't they? I mean, just, just the sheer the, the friendship groups that I've developed. Um, yes. You know, and I'm, I'm sure you're amongst many like of different chat groups on um, Telegram and stuff like that. I don't know half these people, but everybody every day is putting something mm. on there and mm. you know everybody's doing their bit and so many people are doing so many wonderful things that aren't recognized for it you know um just little things like you you and your newspaper um the, the people that print it and get the funding and stuff but you don't have to be doing big things do you to be doing your part and this is what I say to people you know if you can drop off a few leaflets if you can do a few little things it doesn't have to be anything major does it yeah true it's a it is a collective effort it really is and some people don't want to do major things you know <laughs> some people that you know, want you know there's a time everybody's got their own situation to do you've got to take care of yourself your family first you know um you know make make sure cause you can't you can't work from a position of weakness if you're worried about you know putting food on the table i suppose or, or you know paying no, mortgage this, paying rent. this so, is where i'm seeing a lot of problems now i mean i'm, I'm lucky i'm out of the hospital but somebody has messaged me tonight and asked me, what do, what do they do? And I mean, I don't know, um, because they're now being told that at work they have to have a COVID swab um, every week. <laughs> and I mean, swab fruit. sorry, swab a banana. That's what I said. I said, swab, a, swab a, um, an apple. It will come back positive. Yeah. Well, you don't and it's a shame that that's the only way they to get out of it. Make, make, sure you, make sure you pick an apple without COVID then. 
yeah. But this is where they've got you now, isn't it? I mean, mm. you know, you can't even go to the hospital to have an appointment or an operation or anything unless you've had that COVID swab. Yeah. Um, everything is if you comply to do that. And this yeah. is where people don't realise where, you know, some people are like, oh, I don't mind. It's fine. And what I don't know, actually, is, you know, they're going in at Liverpool to um, do swabs on these children in the schools. Yeah. Are they the same swabs that we get, the six inch ones that got their nose and throats? Well, you don't, you don't know, otherwise it's coming out the back of their heads, isn't it? <laughs> but but they've got to be the same one, I'm sure. I mean, that's that is just child abuse. I mean, I expect it'll be a smaller version. Mm. Yeah. But but the way they shove, shove it up your nose, that is, that is abuse anyway. That is isn't abuse, it? isn't it? To do that to people. Yeah. I would need loads of diazepam before someone did that. <laughs> Honestly, I can't stand anything I wouldn't, like that. I wouldn't be able to... good, at least a stiff drink. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I've seen some of these elderly people have it and they're not, you know, they're, they're very vulnerable and they've not known what's been happening to them and they're screaming out in pain. Yeah, it, it's a wicked I... test. And I mean, apparently they're bringing out a new one now that will be saliva based. So, I mean, I don't understand why you can't just hmm. breathe, and not breathe on it anyway if it's so contagious. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, yeah, certainly interesting times. If people want yep. to get involved with your paper, um, yep. like find it or dis- be a distributor, what, uh, what, where, where do they find? Obviously, if they're on Facebook, then there is a group, isn't there? Yeah, um, we've, uh, we've just had the website redesigned uh, by Ian of Design Karma in Manchester, which is, I'm, I'm saying that because he's done it for absolute free, another sign of, uh, you know, people voluntarily helping us, helping us to, you know, do, do what we do, obviously spreading the truth. Um, and everything's on there now, well, nearly everything, but you can, if you want to contribute, um, you know, with articles or yeah. you know, images, what have you, if you want to uh, distribute, uh, if you want to advertise with us, uh, and then oh, subscribe, donate, etc., etc., it's it's all actually on there. It's the lightpaper.co.uk. You don't need any W's, it's just HTTPS colon slash the lightpaper.co.uk everything's on there uh like i said there's a form if you want to if you want to uh, help us help us distribute um yeah yeah we just wish that, that there's more papers because we just want to go door to door we just want to put one through it do you know what i mean because they look so good these papers and yeah they are yeah, we just can't get enough of them can we at the moment well, yeah, they... down to ian ian can take a bow if he's listening yeah. <laughs> What do you, have you got any tips for um, how what are people finding is the best way to distribute them? Because I don't want to just waste them on people that are already woken up, if you know what I mean. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, you know, it's a two it's a two edged sword because obviously activists like to like well, do like to read yeah. it, but hopefully yeah. they'll, hopefully they'll read it and then and then pass it on. That's, and, it, and, yeah. that's, that's certainly why I, I, I do, even if even if yeah. I, read, I still read it, just to, you know what I mean. Yeah, definitely. Remember, remember yeah. what the hell we're, we're telling people, you know what I mean. I like reading Facebook posts as well. I'd rather just I like the paper because you can just do you know what I mean. It's, it's like, old school, and yeah, it's old school. Yeah. <laughs> it's and easy it's, to read as well. It's easy to read than a screen. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you get inundated then with um, articles from people hoping that you'll um, post it? Then do you? Um, no, and uh, I'm being honest there. Um, you know, we've got some we've got some brilliant regular writers uh, who um, you know uh, are always doing this, sort of, and then and then there's um, people who, who've who've done one one article or two articles, and and you know haven't, haven't done any more. Obviously, everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome to contribute, um, as long as the, the 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 only criteria put on them are it's got to be obviously newsworthy and topical. It's got to be um, truthful. It's got to be verifiable. You know, uh, obviously we've got to be able to source it and go right. Okay, that's, you know, um, it's got to be true, um, and it's got to be under a thousand words, and that's about it. You know, we've got UK, we've got international economy, health, um, and you know, I suppose that, you know if, if there's anything else going on, but you know, the whole world is 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 focused on on one or two major things right now, which is obviously the the fourth industrial revolution. And, and the means by which they are leveraging a fake pandemic to get us there, to get us to where 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 they want us to go. Which and we can all see the the future that they have planned. Um, I believe we can stop it, um, uh, because it's it's so easy yet so hard. Like I say, we don't need to you know come together and and and, and I mean we, we you know having a billboard campaign would be great and that would be a coming together to 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 create a huge 
a huge thing together. But um, but it, it's you know it's that that's doable, isn't it? You know, what I mean, we could say, oh, okay, well, all we need to do is the right, you know, the, the right design, the right, the, the, you know, the right campaign, the right design, the right amount of money, you know, and hopefully, you know, the the, the company will accept it. it. Won't be, you know, too too um, you know, too sen- censorship whatever to you know they won't want to censor it um and um you know but but what we don't need is 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 to find 600 people who want to run as mps or to uh you know find five hundred thousand people who want to who want you know who are who are battle ready just to, to to you know to take out the take out the police and because what do you do then what do you do after that you know yeah. the the it, the system the systems are the systems are okay it's the it's the people behind them are, are, are completely corrupt yeah. what so is- and if the long term, watch what is the long term solution though? Once we, if enough people wake up, what, how do we like rule ourselves if we can't have, if we don't have a government? You'd have a lot smaller government, wouldn't you? Because that's that, that is the problem here. You know, at the end of the day, our individual freedom uh, recedes because the power of the state is expanding, you know, so it's, it's, it's. Two, two, two parts on on the same scale, two two points on the same line, you know, mm-hmm. and they push it, they push against each other. So the more more individual freedom we take back, the less the power of the state has. Mm-hmm. So you know, that 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 comes naturally over time as humans do what they do and they say, right, well, I'm, well, you know, I'm I'm not sitting here accepting shit from the government anymore. And if they do make a claim about a public health emergency or a terrorist attack or war or this person or that person, they've got to damn well prove it. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. you know, we'll do, we get the government we deserve. Like I say, we've been we've been completely politically inactive. People have let you know all kinds of things happen over over the decades, and we've just kind of got on with it and, and what have you, because everybody else does. And 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 you know, um, but if there's enough of us that are, are waking up, then then well, it doesn't matter now. You're not going to stop. Um, watching what the government does, and you know, and spreading spreading information about it, and letting people know, alerting people about you know what they're up to. The government, on behalf of obviously the, the billionaire psychopaths that are actually directing policy in this and most other countries of the world. Yeah, when it comes to common law, is there a specific um, group that you would like you prefer or don't follow? You know, what I mean, because there's so many groups out there, and I'm worried about controlled opposition and stuff like that. Yeah, I haven't. Come, I I must admit, I haven't. I, well, I haven't really delved. I, I haven't come across, you know, one that goes that the, these guys are absolutely spot. I come across people that you know, or or, or you know, posts or, or or what have you that are absolutely spot on. Um, and uh, David Edelman uh, in in Manchester, he's 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 very good. Um, uh, how do you spell that, David? Edelman, A D E L M A N. Uh, and we've got obviously Michael Benicia, who's who's doing all the court, the court, um, yeah. uh, the summons to the court, yeah. court cases, private prosecution. That's it, private criminal prosecution uh, on all the MPs. He's obviously uh, you know an expert. Um, you know what? It's like anything else. You know, you, you you gather information from a gazillion different places and test it, test it all. One one thing that I see a lot is Article 61 of the Magna Carta, which is no longer, you know, it's been repealed. So, you know, you, people quoting it, you don't you don't need it if you know what I mean. You know, I'm standing under Article 61, but you're standing under a, a law that has been repealed by Parliament. You know, so it was Parliament that put it, put it on and put the Magna Carta on in the first place. Um, um, and swearing an oath to barons as well. I don't I don't I don't get that. Um, my thing is with the common law. The common law is based on the Bible, and the Bible it says you don't swear an oath uh, to anybody. You, you, you let your yes be yes, and let your no be no. In other words, be be completely honest and truthful. Um, you know, don't be don't be on the hand or devious. Um, <laughs> which again, quite a tall quite a tall order in today's world. Um, so the I mean the common law is the fact that you you know you've got God 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 given rights to 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 live your life. Uh, freely as you choose up to the point where you are interfering with another person's right to live their life freely as they choose so whether that's their person property family uh, ability to work ability to trade what have you um obviously you know our activity can be mutually beneficial all the time you know um we don't have to rip each other off um we don't have to sell you know faulty or or uh knowingly crap goods um 
or services or what have you we can we can you know we can we can live in a world of quality and on honesty and integrity and, and all the rest of it um and that that is you know that, that there there's the be the change you want to see in the world it's you, you can rail against the government for being corrupt you can rail against that corporation and you know they are um but it's not going to change anything. You know, how you change is you change your 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 dealings in your daily life with everything you do. You know what I mean? And and you know, and it ripples out from there, doesn't it? Yeah, and and that's the thing, especially with Boris, because as you said, you can go about your life as long as you don't start impeding on other people's lives. Well, Boris is doing that majorly to our lives. I mean, when you can't go into your town and you can't do the things that you've always been able to do because you're seen as a criminal for. Uh, not wearing a mask, um, we're, we're being forced to lock down, we can't live our lives the way we always have because it's locked down on statistics that's, that's falsified and stuff like that. It just, he's really impede on, on people's freedoms and, and rights, really. That's what tyrants do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what criminal tyrants do. You know, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you know, the more, I see him as, I, I don't see him as government, you know, authority. I see them as a criminal, a criminal mafia. I mean, they, they are the yeah. they are the front, the front puppet guys, but they're a criminal mafia. Yeah. You know, these people are are, are evil. The criminals, the psychopaths. They are completely selfish. They 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 don't have our. <clears throat> they only have their best interests at heart. They can't give two shits about us. Um. I mean, you know. <sighs> And it's like I say, and the the battle is getting other people to see that. So we 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 you know we we do we do um, we do truth papers and we do songs and we do memes and we do posts and we do talking in the queues and we do holding our head up high, maskless mm-hmm. and free and smiling, and um, you know and engaging with people and you know hi hi how you doing you know what I mean just just be 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 the light be the light shining in the darkness because even though the people don't know they can you know they can they can sense it but like I say we 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 defeat the old world by building the new one and and making the old one obsolete yeah I love that be the light and that's the name yeah. of the paper as well yeah. isn't it it is brilliant. It's brilliant. Shine the light on the darkness. Yeah. Thanks, Charlie. All right, now. It's all right. Right. <laughs> She's always like this, don't worry. It's, but... it's yes. <laughs> Darren, um, we're, we're going to take a break now. We've got Louise. Um, Louise Hampton is going to be joining us now. Oh, she's great. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um... A bollocks. So, yeah, certificate of bollocks, I know. I agree. <laughs> so, I wonder, I know you're really busy, but if you're still around about 25 past 10, should we give you a ring to sing the song with you? Uh, I won't be able to do it at that time, I'm afraid. <laughs> That's all right, we'll, we'll be singing it without you, but we have to. I hope we sing it anyway. Yeah, yeah we yeah, always we always do every it. week, but no, I appreciate you're busy and yeah. you haven't got if time just to start, ask. You wouldn't know. Yeah. <laughs> As my friend Joe says, if you don't ask, you don't yeah. get. Uh, and I'm, I'm learning to get really pushy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. But, uh, that's, that's how we need it. Yeah, yeah. Is, is there anything you'd like to end on, Darren? Uh, other than saying thank you very much for inviting us on. It's been a pleasure to speak to you. Um, hopefully, um, hopefully, again, another little, another effort. All our efforts count. All our efforts count. Every, every little thing we do. We, even if it's just handing out a leaflet on the street or you know what I mean or a smile at somebody or you know or a huge massive conversation with an MP or, or what have you you know what I mean everything on the scale everything that we do makes yeah. a difference and you, can, you can't win a war with with one with one move with one battle and um, the war's won over many 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 separate battles many many what, what I'm saying lots of um, lots of missiles lots of lots of little attacks lots of skirmishes um, you know, uh, all our combined efforts will win, and we will win. We will, we will win. It's as simple as that. We will win because if you feel, if you give people an actual choice between freedom and slavery, you know what I mean? It, it, it's 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 a no-brainer. They just need to know that they've got that choice right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, Darren. Well, it's been an absolute mm. pleasure to speak to you. And yeah, thanks, Darren. I will thanks, Darren. Keep following you, and um, hopefully we might see you in Cornwall in December. But if not, we'll stay in touch for sure. Thanks, Charlie, and you'll certainly see me. In, uh, you'll certainly see me in Bristol on Saturday, or hear, hear me from there as well, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. All right, my darling. Well, you take care, and I'll speak soon. Thanks. For All the best. Good night. Take care. Bye. 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 We're just gonna have a little break, guys. A little music break. Um, 
just a few minutes. You've got time to get a quick cup of tea and a drink, and we'll be back after this song. Um, for those of you listening, um, we have got our awesome Louise Hampton here, who lots of you will know, who received a certificate of bollocks back in... What month was that, Louise? I think it was in June or July I first got it. Maybe mm-hmm. August. I can't really remember. Because oh, it was that special. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> God. Welcome to the show, my lovely. It's lovely to finally catch up with you. You are a hard person to get hold of. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> about that. It's all right. Um, you know, good for you not being tied to your phone. I wish I wasn't tied to mine so much. But, um, yeah, so, Louise, can you tell us your story, my darling, about where you were working, what happened, and how you gained your certificate of bollocks, basically? <laughs> so, um, I was working as an NHS 111 health advisor um, in the London call centre, and I'd worked there for almost three years. Um I really loved the job and it was extremely busy. Um, We used to take call after call. There was never any breaks between calls. Um, And what I would do is I would take a call from somebody and I'd run through a telephone triage service, um, just ruling out what their symptoms are. And then I'd either um, refer them to A&E, arrange an emergency ambulance or send them to an out of hours doctor or dentist, etc. Um, and the service was always always really overwhelmed. But during the COVID pandemic, hardly anybody was contacting us. And I think it was because the government had put the fear of God into people. So we, we literally had no work. It was crazy. So were you just sitting in there on the phone? Yeah, a lot of the time we... Oh, this sounds really funny but we were just eating snacks or colouring rainbows where where is for the yeah NHS rainbows um before the pandemic we were taking call after call but during the um the pandemic we'd have six or seven minute gaps between calls where we'd be twiddling our thumbs thinking why isn't everybody calling us yeah yeah and you believe that was because people were too scared to go into hospital because they yeah definitely so how long, um, so you basically went to work every day, you, you didn't have much work, but people were still obviously phoning in with various things. Yeah, definitely. So um, I was really surprised because I used to say to my colleagues, where are all these people calling up with high temperature, continuous cough, sore throat, lack of taste? There was nobody calling up with COVID symptoms. And I and I was thinking, surely if we're in a pandemic, everybody will be calling us coughing down the phone and stuff. But it was just your general um, ailments, really, that people were calling up for. There were no COVID symptoms. Sure. And what area of London was that? Um, so our call centre specifically took calls uh, for the London boroughs in in uh, northwest london they're massive boroughs so you've got london borough of harrow which had northwick park hospital which was supposedly at the epicenter of the virus we dealt with london borough of hillingdon ealing hounslow and brent and these are all densely populated areas um where covid was supposed to be really high Mm, wow So so you think the hospitals were pretty much empty the same as they were down here basically yeah, definitely. So we took we also took calls for parts of the West Midlands um, and Bristol. So two other uh, Birmingham and Bristol, two other major cities. We also took calls for Essex and Suffolk. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't just northwest London hospitals. It was hospitals for other cities. And when people were calling us after 630 because their doctors were shut, um, we weren't sending anyone to A&E because, number one, they were refusing to go. Number two, they just weren't calling us. People were refusing emergency ambulances. There were no out-of-hours doctor's appointments at the hospitals either because they were all blocked out and they were only given telephone consultations only. So I know for a fact we weren't sending anybody to the hospitals after 6.30. Oh, it? <clears throat> yeah. It is, it is, it is, it is, it is, Everybody says we're in Cornwall and we Cornwall and we should have a low 
great but actually you're in London and you're saying it was just as quiet yeah um, definitely I, I think lots of people are starting to look at numbers no, more now I know my partner is looking into like the hospitals in London um Liverpool sorry to see mm. how many people are in how many their hospitals can take mm. um it's just, yeah it's just a sham so anyway so you, you can see all of this and you carry on working yeah um, what, what were your friends thinking your work colleagues about it um the, the thing is that 111 because we were all we all had to self uh, not sorry not self isolate we all had to do the 2 meter distance things and there were screens up between the desks so right. you had to be separated from your colleagues and you couldn't really talk to them to be honest um but when i did speak to a few people on my break they'd say where are all the people that are supposed to be calling us with COVID symptoms? We thought every single caller would be coughing, saying they can't breathe, but that just wasn't the case. Mm. Oh, it's just correct. So, so you, um, but prior to your um, um, certificate, <laughs> God. Was, was you building up to do a big dramatic thing or did you just get that certificate and you're like, what a load of bollocks. Talk, talk us through it. Um, right, so looking back on that um, certificate video, I find it quite embarrassing now because <laughs> when people see me at protests, um, some people know my name and some people say, oh, my God, I knew that girl that did that, that, that video, that certificate, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is embarrassing. <laughs> it, it was a little bit of a breakdown because I was hating my job um, I was questioning the, the COVID narrative. I was angry at the government. My kids were winding me up that day. Um, I didn't really want to go into work. I hated my job at the time anyway. And I pulled over in my car to use my phone to make a phone call. And I saw the certificate in my bag and I, I took it out and I was, I was fuming. So that video was a bit of a, a breakdown stroke rant. Uh, it kind of happened by accident. Um I think it got a couple of million uh, from <laughs> oh, on Twitter. <laughs> oh brilliant. Absolutely. I can't watch it, it's shameful. <laughs> I remember seeing it when it first came out. This is Nina here, by the way. I'm kind of starstruck because it's like uh, like seeing the different people that have like been speaking their truth. It's like when I speak mm -hmm. to them, it's like, oh, my God. Yeah. But, yeah, um, I remember seeing it. And, yeah, I like, could just see the sheer frustration. So I can totally get what you're saying about, like, you just had enough that day. And yeah, definitely. It was really well, in my opinion. Yeah, you did. You said it as it was. Oh, thank so, you. And you actually got a certificate then. <laughs> Yeah, and a badge. Yeah, and a badge. The irony of it, wasn't it? It was like, for God's sake. We, we actually saw you, I think, yeah. at, the last, at the last protest, because mm. Shelley said, oh, yeah, that woman there, well, that woman there. And I said, oh, oh, oh. She goes, oh, Louise, it's a yeah. certificate of bollocks lady. And I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. we, didn't have time, we didn't have time to kind of, like, stop and chat. I, I did stop briefly, yeah. You don't like imposing on people, because you're having a nice Oh, I day. do, I do. <laughs> oh, it's fine. I'm, I, I don't mind... I'm too kind to tell people, like, oh, I'm busy or whatever. I just say, oh, hi, and talk and take pictures and stuff. <laughs> I was listening to one of your, um, you were doing a live recording Piers, actually, and this guy's chatting to you, and then you say, Piers is my favourite, actually. And then he said, oh, oh, I'll let you carry on and listen then. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good way because people do have a habit don't they that they come up and keep talking to you and stuff and you, you you're there you want yeah. to listen to what's being said yeah definitely but yeah. no well done to you my lovely so um thank after, you after all of that what happened at work <laughs> was you then awaiting the phone call did did you just text um, it and then think right off I top on my day and what happened next well, I was a little, this is a confession, um, nobody knows this, this is the first time I'm revealing this, I was a bit of a chicken, so I did the certificate video, so I did the certificate video and I went into work and about two hours into my shift I went into the toilet and I had a message from my mum saying what the hell have you done? It, could, it, it had gone viral and my mum's not even on Facebook and I went back to my desk and I thought 
oh my god do I stay in the job or do I leave so I lied to my boss that I had a headache <laughs> <laughs> and um, they let me go early so I quickly ran out it had blown up on social media and I was thinking oh my god the next day I was getting phone calls from Care UK but I was too chicken to answer the phone um, then they was emailing me, please get in contact with us, we need to do an investigation. Um, and I never actually spoke to them face to face, it was all dealt with via email because I was too chicken and embarrassed. <laughs> Especially the anxiety though, with all that yeah. stuff, and then it's gone viral and yeah, because Shelley, you had a similar, well you've been in those shoes a bit haven't you as well. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah interesting times. Um, and, you know, I had the, the email basically saying, can you phone us up to um, discuss your position? Well, I thought, <laughs> the point really is there, because I'm sure as how sure that I haven't got a position anymore. <laughs> so I, I just said, um, I'd send them a letter and a post, and I haven't done, actually. I, I don't see the point. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, I think it's obvious that I'm not going back. But so, so they never got in touch with you again. Um so they haven't tried finding you or anything? Um, well, what happened is they said, um, I said, oh, I'm really sorry I didn't answer your calls. And they said, we're going to uh, do an investigation. You're now suspended on full pay. Oh, um, so it went on for about a week. And I thought, what shall I do? Shall I re resign? Shall I get legal advice? And I just thought, I'm going to resign. So I sent an email to say I resign. Um, and they emailed me back to say, well, regardless of you resigning, we're still going to do the investigation. Um, a week later, they emailed me the um, the findings of their investigation. And they said that they, wanted, they were going to fire me on grounds of gross misconduct. And all I did was reply back, sorry, I don't care. I've already left. <laughs> 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 and I haven't heard anything since. Was that the email of bollocks? You said bo bollocks after that. It's like... Yeah, I, I should dig it out and screenshot it. Yeah. <laughs> the email of bollocks. This is like the second episode, isn't it? Or the second series of, of <laughs> bollocks. <laughs> People loved it, though. Did, I mean, did you get any hate? Um... Yeah, I got, I did get a lot of hate. People saying that um, I didn't really work for one one one. Um, I made it up. I was an actress. I just want fifteen minutes of fame. Um, people are disgusted in me because people are dying of the virus. But all I did was just block and delete the trolls. I've had a lot more love than hate. I think, which is good. Definitely, definitely, because we we need a lot more people like you. Uh, they are people. I think are stepping forward a bit more. Um, I don't yeah. know. It's interesting times. But do you have much contact now with any of your colleagues that you were working with? No. Um, Care UK told me not to contact any of anyone from the company. Um, so yeah, I just I just closed that door and just just left it all behind. And I've I've only kept in contact with one person there, but they've since left anyway. Right. So, have you, have you a new field of friends? What about your family and friends? What did they, um, how did they take it? Um, unfortunately, my mum, she's a nurse, so she, I think she's quite embarrassed about the whole thing, and, yeah, my parents don't really want anything to do with me at the moment. A lot of my family are very disappointed in my COVID views because they believe the whole narrative, so it has been difficult. Oh, bless you. That must be so hard. I'm really sorry. Yeah. Oh, God, that is awful. I mean, I'm really lucky because I've got my my dad who's very active, my mum, she's very awake, and then there's me. Mm. Then there is my dear brother. I love him to bits, but he's totally on the other side. Um, and I think we've I've embarrassed him, most probably. Um, oh. <laughs> but, you know, I, you can't keep your mouth shut for the sake of embarrassment. So, I mean, your mum's a nurse. She must know then what's going on, how quiet the hospitals have been and stuff. Yeah, she, um, I, I can't really say anything because she, she told me not to speak about uh, her experience or whatever. But um, Fair enough. But I have spoken to lots of other nurses who have said that their hospitals have been empty or <clears throat> staff have been put on furlough or annual leave and stuff like that. Well, I, I think maybe it's time to actually get some nurses and doctors that have worked on these really high dependent COVID wards 
because Definitely. people keep saying oh you should speak to somebody that speaks that works on a covid ward it's been totally different well why aren't they coming forward you know exactly. why aren't they telling their story and what was interesting last night um i think the bbc played um played documentary about the doctor and his diary of the coronavirus with four nurses yeah. all very convenient wow. to come out, um to, to see how busy the nurses are and the doctors that's been mm. planned definitely um yeah i think that could be the way forward definitely unless you get some really good actresses you just don't <laughs> i don't know yeah, I, want, I would like to hear from somebody that's fighting on the front line and not all these people saying like oh i work in the nhs it's busy and blah 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 yeah um, you know like my argument is like the whole flu thing people say oh it's an awful way to die well Mm. The flu is when, when you get the flu and you get pneumonia and then you end up on, on a ventilator. Yeah, that isn't any different. So absolutely, it, it's not going to be a good way to die. And all of these people, how do you explain this death? And so, usually, mm. somebody very vulnerable. When someone was saying to me yesterday that they were kicking off because they were saying that their dad died of COVID. Well, actually, he had half a lung, so the COVID really didn't help, and a normal flu virus would have potentially done the same thing you know yeah. there's still lots of talk that covid hasn't been isolated yet mm. um i don't know there's so much to read and learn and you don't know who to believe i mean i take it all on board i'm not a vi what, i want to say virologist is that right mm. i always say that word mm. um you know I, I can do my own research and people have said the same to me like oh you're just a healthcare assistant at the end of the day mm. it, I, I was a bloody cleaner you're in there and you you see yeah. what's coming on um, absolutely and obviously i was getting the emails and um like you people have said well what do you know don't believe her she's not a nurse she's not a doctor and it's like do you know what i wasn't trying to prove anything about the virus just actually the hospitals were really quiet mm. and, you know we shouldn't be scared of this so-called virus um because you're on total lockdown now as well aren't you in london yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, first of all, they were in quite a high tier bef just before the lockdown. Right. And then, yeah. yeah, now now everyone's on the same level, I think. So do you know anybody personally that's died of COVID? I don't know a single person personally. Um, I don't know no nobody at all. No, no. Crazy. Well, I, I, yeah, there are, there are people out there, oh, I know so-and-so, but again, they've been really vulnerable people. And when I worked at the hospital, all of those people in intensive care, they were all really vulnerable people. Um, mm. You know, and, and it's a hard one, isn't it? Because today I was going to post some pictures of the hospital when it was quiet. And it's funny because the whole time I was so suspicious and I was taking photographs um, and... I, I shared them in earlier and then I deleted them because I thought actually I could get into big trouble for this. I, I coloured out the faces of people, but um, you know, just showing the nurses sat down on their phones, and that wasn't to slate at them because I was sat there on my phone as well. Just yeah. To the point that at the, the height of the pandemic that we were overrun, that actually we were doing bollocks. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Yeah, they were doing nothing. So, <laughs> like, like I said, you know, I had to work for three weeks. So, um, you know, the hospitals are picked up now, mm -hmm. and they're really short-staffed. And they're short-staffed because they lost so many of their Kernoflex staff that felt that they'd been shit on, basically. You know, oh, wow. we're all told that we're on the front line, we're a key worker, mm -hmm. and after three weeks, there was no work because they run with an agency, the Kernoflex agency runs within the hospital. So they'll call upon them for outside agencies. And mm. they always rely on agency workers. But because of that, and they shit on so many people, and because the Kernoflex bank, they're not um, substantial, they don't, um, they don't get holiday, no, they get holiday pay, they don't get sick pay, they're not contracted. So mm. they, they were basically told to go and claim universal credit. So your heroes one minute and um, zero the next to somebody yeah. I know. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, but, but they don't want to believe it. It's, it's quite interesting because a group of them that I worked with in one hospital, you know, lovely at work, and I'm still friends with a couple of them on social media, but lots of them, they're there and they can see it, but they, they are so in the fear mm. that they can't admit what is going on. 
you know, I mean, it was three people in Cornwall last Friday that were in hospital with COVID. So if you think that is, you know, viable to shut a whole council mm. up, then there's something wrong with you, really. But I think they still have this fear indented in them that there is this massive pandemic and it's mm. the mainstream media, unfortunately. Absolutely. They're, they're putting the fear of God into people. They're constantly... Um, ramming COVID down our throats, it's it's always this is how many cases we've got. I, I want to know personally what are the deaths, not not the cases. It seems to be a case demic. Mm. Exactly. If you go back six months ago, the daily report on the news every day was how many deaths, and now is how many cases. Well, yeah, if we stopped testing, we wouldn't have the cases. And um, interestingly enough, I mean they they now. Um, putting together the covid deaths and the flu deaths in a chart i don't know why they're combining them but if you do go on the chart it will say like these are covid and these are flu but why even combine it in the first place mm. that, yeah that confuses me because it's like you're just trying to confuse people all the time about the numbers yeah. there's no need for it so um you know and, and the other thing people people have said to me oh you'll never work on the NHS again you're a disgrace well it's taken all this time to realise that the wonderful NHS that I have loved, and when I got my NHS badge, oh, I walked around like a wally with my badge. <laughs> I was so <laughs> Because I got my dream job, we went out for dinner for my niece's birthday, and I'd just been on my course all day, and I wore my badge, and everyone was laughing at me, and I'm like, I work for the NHS, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I was so freaking proud. And now I finally see it. They are just as bloody corrupt as the government. Definitely. I've, I've never looked at it that way before. Um, yeah, it's um, fascinating times. So, so what are you doing with yourself now then, Louise? You, you're out busy protesting? Are you looking for another job or are you quite busy being active? Um, well, the Metro today, um, somebody told me that they ran a news story on me. And um, according to the Metro, I quit my job at the NHS to um, just go on test centre patrol, <laughs> just going around to see if uh, test centres are empty or not. So, <laughs> But the truth is, um, so, yeah, I quit my job, I think it was in September, um, and I had my last pay packet in October. So this this month, November, is, is the first month I'm officially unemployed, as it were. Um, and at the moment, I'm just claiming benefits. Um, I was trying to look for another job, but there's nothing out there at the moment. So I've just gone full time into activism. So posting on Facebook, researching, going to protests, yeah. going to expose all of these local yeah. centres. So I'm just putting all of my energy into that at the moment rather than yeah. trying to find a job where I'd be expected to wear a mask and probably would end up losing it anyway. So yeah. and, and that's the problem. I think lots of people are realising now, um, you know, if they can't wear a mask, where can they work? Um, exactly. I, I was thinking, I know lots of my haters out there would um, laugh, but I've, I've said to one of my friends, Hannah, about like... Um, setting up my own little um we said about doing a care company uh yeah it doesn't have to be a company but you can put mm. a little advert in the post office you know do you know do you want personal help once or twice a week with your shopping or what have you i don't wear a mask but actually i give i'll give you everything else that i've got you know the caring mm. the caring side I, I, i'm a great believer that the universe provides and you know yeah there's always ways and uh, unfortunately no i won't ever work in the nhs again <laughs> Like, it's really sad, isn't it? That it is sad. It's put us off. It it really is sad, but you wouldn't want to work in that system, would you? Now knowing, I mean, I would be expected at some point, I'm sure, to be having um, weekly or fortnightly COVID swabs to wear a mask, mm. which I can't do. And at some point, they're going to be bringing out the vaccines for the staff, mm. aren't they? And if you yeah. are, that, are they going to let you keep your job? We're all kind of. Mm. Um, yeah, we can't do anything because of these stupid rules. Mm. Exactly. I think the um, setting up your own care company is an awesome idea because since this whole COVID thing and then also learning about the poor people in the care homes that have been isolated and stuff, it makes me 
I feel like I'd love to go into a job like that where I'm looking after old people and stuff. But like you say, you'd have to wear the mask, you'd be swabbed, etc. Um, it's just too much. Yeah. I worked in a care home um, when I had no work at the hospitals. They were then passing on work from the care homes. So I did pick up a shift okay. and... Um, Oh, I hated it. It it was hard work. I don't get me wrong. Working in the hospitals was hard work, but because this was a nursing home, they they were all vulnerable elderly mm. people that all needed two people, you know, to do everything. And it's been yeah. hard work, and especially wearing all that PPE. I said, yes, yeah, I said it right because I usually say PPI. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it it was hard, and I said, oh my god, unless I'm desperate, I really don't want to go in there again. Oh, it's a shame. It is a shame because I feel my whole life I am that caring person and mm. if I was to look after you, I, w- I would give you my all. Do you know what I mean? And when yeah. I was in the hospitals, I would always do my best. I wasn't just a mm. quick wash for somebody. I would take time for people. I loved my job. Um, but I'm sure there are people out there that would appreciate someone like me, even though I won't wear a mask, that will come and if mm. they want assistance with personal care or shopping or something a few times a week. Yeah, there, there's lots of people out there, lots of elderly mm-hmm. people out there that don't want um, somebody coming around wearing a mask. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's um, I don't know. There, there's lots of alternatives, but at the mm. moment, I'm just um, well, like you, busy, like we all are, yeah. <laughs> being active, yeah. doing radio interviews and stuff. And um, you know, I did two yesterday, and like I was saying to you earlier on the phone, it's like. Part of me doesn't like sharing all these radio posts that I'm doing because I don't want people to look at me and think, oh, look at her sharing it. She's on the radio again. Because it's not because I'm out because I love myself. It's because we've got to keep this going. Yeah. Mm. The way Definitely. Is, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And um, I've just got to keep spouting it. I'm almost bored with my own story, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm the number one fan. Ain't nobody, nobody more a fan than me. I'm just going to say... <laughs> Do you know, I've, I've had to write a, her um, an autograph tonight, Louise. Oh, really? <laughs> I say, it's the first autograph that has been asked since she's become famous. Oh, for God's sake. Can I ask for a second one? Because um, when I saw your video when you was in the street on the microphone and you said, I'm going to publicly resign, I thought, oh, my God, I love this woman. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a chat with me, though, from our chat in London? No, I didn't. I don't... <laughs> Um, I um I wear glasses and contact lenses, so my eyesight's terrible. And I went to a few protests without contacts in, uh, so I don't recognise anybody at the moment. Can second one. She can she can have the second one. Yeah, it's fine. And probably like you, you'd, I don't feel like I've done anything um amazing. It, it came very natural, and I'm in a place now where lots of us are. We're fighters, and you. We are. Um. But, you know, I wish I did um, wear a different hat that day. (laughs) (laughs) We had a laugh because I did a live the other day and I I I had a farm hat on and my other half said, oh, my God, you wore that hat. I'm like, I know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but, you know, when you're at that point as well, it's like, Mm. I haven't got any makeup on. I don't care. I'm in my power and I'm feeling good, you know. Yeah. Um, I've had a, I've had a, quite a lot of hate to be honest with you because I'm a liar and, oh wow but like I said like you said earlier the love totally mm. outweighs the hate and mm. I know more people want to speak up but they need that income and yeah I, I don't know how we can get out of this because you know there are apparently companies out there that will help legal advice and stuff but I get a few of them that I work with um, that still message me and um, they know what's going on and they say we just can't do it Shelley we need our money I totally appreciate it. but it's so sad on the other hand when you've got these people that have just got compelling evidence yeah. and mm. they, they can't say it mm. you know even one of my previous friends I say previous because despite all of the hate um, I have had a slight um discrepancy supposed to with a good friend that lives around the corner well I thought she was a good friend and all of a sudden she was one that posted on a link and said oh she's a liar she got fired and that that upset me the most it really upset me because I I would pick them up if I see them out take them to school I would 
and she is somebody that works on the COVID ward as well. And you know, oh, her, and her, her and her husband were even at the rallies in Truro and like waved oh. to me and really happy and what have you. And, and she, she did, that. and she did that. And I just said, I, I just can't believe it. Mm. You know, of course, I got my little it's ball. Terrible. Ball. Yeah, and and I just don't understand the reasoning for it. I sent her the screenshot and said I wasn't fired, and she basically just said, "You've gone too far now." Mm. And it's like, what's going on too far? Are you really happy living like this? Yeah. And that's what I don't get. Mm. Um, you know, I had my little boy yesterday saying, can we meet up with her in the park? And I've had to explain. How do you explain to a seven-year-old that actually mummy's had a little bit of a, a row with her parents? You can still see her at school every day, but at the moment, you know, <laughs> that's a hard thing. But hey, hi. That is. Oh. Oh, well, it's just life. I mean, you're not speaking to your parents. That must be awful. It is really hard. They, um, I, because I've been talking about my COVID views, um, since about March or April, and we had a couple of fallin fallings out before, um, the certificate video anyway over my views. So I think it was just the last straw for them because they really genuinely believe that the virus exists. So it was a straw that broke the camel's back, I think. Yeah. It's it's causing so much um, divide. Yeah, divide yeah, in families. Say, yeah. yeah. They're trying to do their plan. We've got like new, new families now, haven't we, in a way? Yeah, we have got new families. And I, I was thinking earlier, I, I know I'm a dreamer. I'm always told I'm a dreamer. But can you imagine, like, in a couple of years' time, I mean, not even that far ahead, but mm. your own community, with your own rules and everything like that. I mean, we joined the assembly, the citizens assembly. There's nothing to say mm -hmm. it can't happen. And as we were saying just now with Darren about how do we see things going? Well, rather than one government rules mm -hmm. everything, if you've got one person per county mm -hmm. and they're fed by the people, it's got to be fairer and easier. And you yeah. have a great system and, yeah. you know, you stop ordering overseas and you use local produce and stuff like that. It's it is basically the big reset, isn't it? But how we can do our own reset, can't we? We can do our own reset, yeah. That's a great idea. It's a, it's a lovely idea. Yeah. I am a bit yeah. of a dreamer, yeah. What's going on um, in London at the moment? Like, what have you seen at the test centres and stuff? Um, so, first of all, I visited um, the Slough Test Centre, which is in Berkshire, which is just uh, about 20 minutes outside of London. Um, that one was completely dead. I saw a few cars going in and out, um, and they didn't like me filming. Um, I visited the Heathrow Test Centre. That one was incredibly dead. I spent the whole live video laughing because I couldn't believe how dead it was. Yeah. Um, I also went to the Twickenham Test Centre in London. Um, that one was completely empty too. And... Um, Today I was supposed to drive to Watford and Hemel Hempstead just to have a look, but I'm going to do that tomorrow. Um, and I'm presuming they're going to be quite empty as well. Yeah. Hang on, why is this happening? Because I've seen so many videos down here as well of just mm -hmm. nothing's happening. What is the situation? What is going on? What are they? What Scare are they tactics. Yeah. What yeah, is definitely. They're going to have people there. Do you reckon? What's is there a plan? Um. I think every time you see the test centres on the media, there's queues, there's loads of people queuing up in cars, getting swabbed. Um, but I think they're just actors um, because a lot of people are now going around the country um, with the hashtag film your test centre and just showing test centres up and down the country are empty. And also last night I went online to book an appointment at a test centre and Heathrow had over 1,000 appointment slots free for today. What? And um, I screenshotted it and put it on my Facebook wall. I could not believe it. I was gobsmacked. So not only are they empty when you turn up, when you go online, there's loads of appointment slots free. I don't think anybody's actually going to get tested. So it's making me think, where are they getting all these uh, test statistics from? Are people actually testing or are they doing the the um postal test i don't really know like i'm a bit suspicious now yeah i'm, you, I'm, I'm just wondering is it direct because i know people are now having to have a test to go into hospitals aren't they so i'm wondering if that's what they're using but no they do it in the hospitals yeah yeah, yeah possibly so, that's the only thing i can think of apart from yeah I mean, 
mean, do you know, obviously, because you were like 111, if somebody phones up and they said, um, my nana's just died, what what would usually happen? There's a reason I'm asking you this question. Um, so if it's an expected death, yeah. um, usually we have some notes on the system to say that they had a, a terminal illness or something like that. Um but yeah, if it's a suspected death, this sounds really horrible and I hated these types of calls. What we'd do is we'd um, check if the person was breathing, etc. And if they wasn't, we'd then have to say to the person, we will send an out-of-hours GP round to verify the death. But it could take up to six hours. That was the wait time. So a lot of the time, families would be there waiting with a dead person for five or six hours and they keep calling us back saying when's the doctor coming and it was heartbreaking well i'm asking you this because my friend um a few nights ago her nanny died at half a second oh. her nanny was left nearly 48 hours before a doctor would come out or anything oh wow i i, I totally believe that because i've I've had people call back after six hours saying a doctor's still not come to verify that my grandma, etc., has passed away. Yeah, it's just shocking. So, yeah, two days lying there in the lounge. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, horrendous. It's so sad. It is, and she didn't know if the reason was because they've got to leave it 48 hours in case anybody's got COVID, but then they've got their PPE, haven't they? That's true, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I, I haven't seen like loads of, funeral companies um you know that seem to have loads of work on more so than usual yeah that's true I thought during the pandemic that I'd be seeing ambulances rushing up and down because I live on a high street I thought there'd be ambulances rushing up and down all day I don't see many funeral cars private ambulances mm. yeah and, and I just had a message from Hannah she said that the private ambulance company that do the tests in Cornwall have made approximately two million pounds out of COVID. They get paid for every test they do. Wow. The incentive just to make it up to get paid. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, there's backhanders mm -hmm. going out yeah. everywhere, aren't there, really? I heard recently yeah. the so called pandemic that they, some people said that ambulances were going around just um, and were told to just go around with their sirens on just to make, just for like dra dramatic effect kind of thing. Do you? Does that sound like what happened, or did you you didn't notice that? Um, oh, I'm not too sure, but um, what I do know at one 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 is when people were calling us with clear heart attack or stroke symptoms, and I'd get to the um, outcome and I'd say, based on your symptoms, I'd like to arrange you an emergency ambulance. They would say. I don't want an ambulance and I'd say why and they'd say well I don't want to go to hospital because I don't want to catch Covid so I'd end up trying to persuade them they'd still refuse so I couldn't send the emergency ambulance and I then had to put them in a call uh, sorry a call back queue for a clinician so either a nurse or paramedic to call them back to then further persuade them so I wasn't sending that many ambulances um, so I know there weren't that many um, 999 ambulances going around northwest London or Bristol or Birmingham, etc. Did you hear about at any point if any any of them had, had survived or died or what? Um, no, the only time we ever get feedback at 111 um, was when somebody had died because there had been an error on a call um, somewhere along the chain. Um, but luckily, that never happened while I was working there. You, <laughs> yeah, and I just didn't want to be called up on an investigation. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! And Hannah's saying they were playing football in Cornwall. The ambulance um, drivers, is that right, Hannah? Wow! <clears throat> it doesn't surprise me. Nothing surprises me. It's like we say, how on earth did they have time to make TikTok videos? Exactly. <laughs> I was sucked into it because you're like, oh, isn't it great? <laughs> and it's like. <laughs> thinking you know oh actually yeah. where, why aren't they looking after all these sick covid patients exactly and um, like you in there coloring in your rainbows i was um yeah going out, clapping for a i didn't i clapped i think for the first two weeks and mm. even my partner didn't go out and clap and i'm like come on you need to be part of this <laughs> i got <laughs> sucked into it at first yeah i, I think remember we're... going out there cry, clapping feeling really emotional thinking oh god there's all these people out there dying and I felt really proud of the NHS. 
And then I saw some videos of nurses and doctors at certain big hospitals in London. All the staff were outside clapping. They had the fire brigade outside, the ambulance crew and the police all flashing their sirens and hooting their horns on a Thursday night. And I'm thinking, hmm. surely they, that all the nurses should be looking after the patients. Yeah. All the police should be out fighting knife crime because this is London. And um, no, 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 like a big pantomime, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we do get sucked in which is so easy. Yeah. I'm really Definitely. proud of you. I never clapped. Did you not? No, you are. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the only, but I have got to be honest, the first couple of weeks I didn't because you where didn't. I live, there's not many people. So I thought I'd just feel like such an idiot going out clapping. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like, I always missed the time. I was like, oh, yeah. And it's like, an hour late and I'd be like oh I missed it there again yeah <laughs> <laughs> it, it was really hard then because um I, I you know my little one loved going out there and banging a saucepan and stuff um and then like after a couple of weeks I would like be shutting the curtains and windows so we couldn't hear them and it'd be like aren't we going out to clap no <laughs> be like you can clap inside if you want to <laughs> try and explain a little bit to a seven-year-old and then but then you did get paranoid as well because I live on like a terrace of houses and on um, both sides it's quite a busy road and you're thinking everybody must be thinking she stopped coming out clapping mm. <laughs> <laughs> as well. um so then you're thinking oh, no. oh, God, they're probably all talking that number parent number 28 she's not out clapping again it's not like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> it did yeah did you go out and clap Louise um, I think the first two weeks I was clapping and I felt really emotional and I was like, oh, this is so good and everyone's coming together for the pandemic and that, that was in the very beginning when I was sanitising my entire shopping. <laughs> <laughs> and when I look back, I think, Louise, you were so dumb. <laughs> no, you weren't, but it's, it, it, you know, it, it's very easy when information comes in first like that. You don't get any other information for the first few weeks, do you? No. And then no. things start to, to come up and mm. start to not add up. So it's easy. I mean, I think yeah. most of us did get fooled, really. Yeah. Mm. When Hannah said we never clapped. Good. I know you were. <laughs> yeah. you, you probably knew from the start because you're very intelligent. Um, <laughs> no, she is. I've, I've yeah, got to give her a due. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she probably had, I didn't really know Hannah then so um but what and what they did was they scared the shit out of us but then they reu they united us with this clapping didn't they yeah we did we, it's a ritual as well yeah we all came together it was a ritual it yeah. was yeah uh we came together and then um when all the deaths when it all died down um yeah it stopped because even they were it was um, for some reason they said it's time to stop now, didn't they? And it was like, thanks for that. Because yeah, I think oh, people were the, thinking, oh, this is getting rubbish now. Yeah. The original one that started the clapping <laughs> asked people to stop. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, now. Because we say perhaps we should. Please, be come like, on. It's been so <laughs> come on, stop now. We, we thought it'd be a good idea if we went out and like blew whistles like every Thursday night and just start, started shouting with megaphones, wake up everybody, wake yeah. up. And... Yeah, we need to do that. Um, yeah. I know, I just worry if I would be mm. the only one. <laughs> I think my neighbour's quite switched mm. on actually. Mm. Um, yeah, mm. but we were talking and she was the lovely lady that told me that with the Track and Trace app, because um, I was like, oh, you don't need that and what have you. And she said, and you know I, I can't argue with that I mean I, I know my stuff and with my business I would I've never had it and mm. I would never ask anybody I just wouldn't it's mm. in me but she said that if they had anyone come and they later tested positive for COVID because of that track and trace system she would get two and a half thousand pounds so wow that's a bit of an incentive isn't it really yeah oh wow um, and this is what people aren't getting at the moment. Yes, they're all getting paid. Well, not all of them, because we know some of the self-employed people, they've had to claim universal credit. I was quite fortunate mm -hmm. because I was still doing photography. I wasn't, I wasn't doing a lot. So they base it on your last year accounts. Yeah. Um, I will get that again in a couple of weeks, but this time I'll get double because last time it was 40% and this time it's 80%. Mm -hmm. so that'll see me going for a couple of months but isn't that easy money mm -hmm. and billions of pounds of debt where people aren't asking oh it's lovely 
they're going to have to pay it mm. back at some point mm. in, in so one case. And this is where I think they've got you with the, um, you know, if Agenda and 2130 goes ahead, the universal credit plan where everybody gets rid yeah. of that debt and has the same currency, etc. And and yeah, because because the idea eventually is 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 everybody is out of debt on on the thingy that we don't own anything. Mm. And what does, yeah. what what are slaves? Oh yeah, slaves don't own anything, do they? That's so yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, no. it's um. Oh, I, I feel as free as can be. Really, you know, not working that nine. To, not that it was ever a nine to five job, but you know, when you're a mum. And even dads as well. And I credit to those single mums out there that bloody do full time jobs and everything. I mean, I think I run a home. I look after my seven year old. Um, I was working. I got a you, you're trying to get organised the next day with pet lunches, and you like living these things that you don't want to do. And I enjoyed lockdown at first because it was like there's no rush. It's, it's you know it's enjoyable. Mm. And this this is where they united us all, isn't it? We had time with families and stuff yeah. like that. But they're like giving it to you one hand and taking it out the other hand. Mm. And I just think now, you know, when I've been there, I think, oh, I'll go and have a swim at the beach. I've never had time to do these mm. things. And I gave up mm. singing in a choir that I loved because Wednesdays was a good day for me to do a 12-hour shift. I gave up something I loved. Mm. But yeah. Hey, but actually, I realised now, do you know what? I've got everything I need. I don't need anything. We, we would all like something nice, but do you know what? I, I don't need anything. And I'll, I'll be damned if I'm going to go and work for two weeks so I can say I've got a brand new couch in my lounge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At that point, don't you? It's like, um, actually, none of that matters. Mm. I'm not that I've ever really been a materialistic person anyway, but I think I was quite driven because I had debts to pay off, paid off my debts, and then it was like, right, I'll take some nice things. Um, so it's nice to do a bit of work, but actually, it's all about experiences and time, isn't it? Absolutely. And if I was working in a hospital now, I, I just wouldn't have time to do anything, what I'm doing. <laughs> and we were at that point, I had told a couple of fibs on my last couple of shifts because the rallies in Plymouth started at like two o'clock. And, <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know what? My child mind has got a problem. I've got to leave at um, 11. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they would be like, yeah, that's fine. And, um, and then I quickly like sneak off and go to a rally. <laughs> <laughs> you rebel. <laughs> Oh, it's all coming out now, and exclusive on the show. <laughs> yeah, but it just had to be done because I, I couldn't contain it anymore, just like you guys. Yeah. And yeah, Louise doing what she did and what you're doing now, you're so passionate mm. about it, and I feel like I've been waiting my whole life for this. Mm. That sounds sad. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I feel like I'm doing what I'm meant to be mm. doing. Yeah. So, yeah. And as I said, we are all in... Um, Synchronicity at the moment. Mm. Have I said that right? Mm. Yeah, we're all thinking yeah. lightly, and we seem to be meeting with so mm. many people that are all on the same page, and everything just rolls into one and happens for a reason. Mm. Um, you know, when, the night before we did the rally, I, I jokingly said to Hannah and Joe, "I might even wear my uniform." And in the morning, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. You know, it wasn't all planned because it was only the night before that I decided because I'd received an email that said um, what's going on. Yeah. We received screenshots because a lovely lady sat right next to me, decided to share something far and wide. Yep. I did I did give her my permission though. And she uh, no, 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 no. Let's say it right. I put a screenshot, <laughs> I put a screenshot in the in the Cornish woman version thingy that we, we talk about and I, I asked her if I could put it out. She didn't check <laughs> it. And she didn't check that it had her name on the top of it, so we both cocked up we both basically lost her job. It was, it, it was a joint effort, really. <laughs> you both lost it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Charlie has told me that when she, excuse the language, she fucks up properly. I, I bought her some more teas tonight. It's I epic. <laughs> she did. They both gave me presents for me. Nina bought me flowers and Charlie bought me Maltesers. And, oh, I love Maltesers. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we're, we're all aligned with these new friendships and stuff. And, um... I'm I'm really blessed and I bet you've got a lot of new friends going through all of this as well that are yeah, it's crazy because um I've always felt like an, an outsider and I've always been the black sheep of my family but now I'm connecting and meeting with people who are all on the same level and I'm like actually I'm not that weird it's everyone else that thought I was weird they're the weirdos <laughs> 
when you walk out your house and you go into a shop and everyone's in a mask and you're like it's just surreal isn't it? it is it is a bit scary but I just go in and um, I smile. I don't go around singing, making an exhibition, but I just carry on as normal. And I think, God, they're all like, look, a face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just well, got a face. I'll tell you, tell you the positive thing about COVID, COVID in my story is I, I did have times where I didn't really say anything to anybody that I would have lonely points. Um, but ever since this has happened, I feel like I've got real good uh, network of friends. I've never felt so... Mm loved if that makes any sense don't get all kind of you know mushy and stuff yeah i'm gonna cry now because i feel the same <laughs> I know. It, it is, it? it's just like the, fr- the friendship weird, the friendships that, that we've got it's like i feel like i feel like i've got family yeah. you know what i mean yeah like, definitely yeah i do and i do worry that when this is all over what will happen will people like like just get on with their lives and we'll go back to normal or, or what no or just... because we'll be like doing special gatherings of mm. like-minded people yeah we're gonna have to fight a new cause yeah gonna have to just keep fighting cause after cause <laughs> we'll have to find something else after that won't we like like if the tree is gonna get cut down we'll all just come together and just like <laughs> yeah. take that tree down my love you know definitely i said like these guys charlie and nina obviously we've been doing this and it wasn't planned they were my first guests on my show um because they do some amazing videos of martha the marshal and we had such a good time the first night it was like guys do you want to do this every week and anyway so we've been doing it for the last i think it's nearly three months now actually and um yeah and i feel blessed and i've got hannah and joe that help organize the rallies and stuff and we're always facetiming and stuff and i've just got my little circle of sisters i say and um I, 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 it sounds really ridiculous, but I've got this like inspiration. I've never had a tattoo. I want a little tattoo with a symbol inside my wrist that represents all of us, and we all have the same one. And that sounds really stupid. Oh, that sounds people, really cool. Like, but I just oh, I, that sounds really cool. I'm going to get yeah. one too. You, That's you, a nice idea. I'm yeah. going to wait. I'm going to wait before you. you've got to get it first. So, like, I know that you don't back out of it first. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> So I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna be the only one that too, and then everybody's like, "No, Charlie, we're not going for it." And I'm stood there, and I'm like, "Oh my god, <laughs> that poor." Just so if you, if you lead, oh, well, I am thinking they can be painful, can they? So if we just had a dog tattooed, just a <laughs> that would be enough. Connect the dots. No, the dots could be the world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we need to start round up, guys. Um. Um, Louise, it's been a real privilege. And um, can I urge you? Because I know you said you haven't spoken out yet and stuff. Get out there and do your stuff, girl. Because you are inspiration. And well, oh, thank you. You need to get out there and keep sharing it. And I'm, I'm sure we'll be in further contact. And hopefully, we can get a whole load of NHS workers together, and we can do mm. some stuff. We'll yeah, just have the NHS workers mm. rallies. Yeah, that would be. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And and maybe Martha the Marshal could do could t- do an episode where 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 she gets a certificate of bollocks mm. maybe yeah <laughs> that'd be so cool <laughs> yeah I really wish that I didn't get rid of the certificate of bollocks because I could have auctioned it for charity or something did uh, you get rid of it yeah I ripped it up and threw it in the bin oh oh but do you know what that's I'm sure someone would have bought it and I could have donated it to charity or something it's been done. Yeah, you weren't to know though. Yeah, you weren't to know, and I, I can imagine no. rage. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I would have wanted to. <laughs> yeah. <have> it. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to, we'll have to get you a proper certificate printed out. Um. Anyway, <laughs> quick round up, and then Louise, you are going to stay on and sing out with us, aren't you? Oh, what are we going to sing? Um, which verse first? I like a sing song. Yeah. No, I know oh. you do. Don't I've worry. seen you do it actually on a video. Yeah. It's brilliant. <laughs> you know, yeah, we, we always sing out with a yeah. couple of verses if we are the 99%. Yeah. Which verse should we do? Maybe you choose the, choose the verse. Oh, um, let me try and think of one. Um, few you can stick your corona a virus up your yeah. ass. Is that a good one to start with? That's a good one, and then yes. we'll just do the 99% after. All right, before we okay. get to our song, um, our song. <laughs> Dad's song um yes this saturday intro one o'clock hope i said the time right 
Um, intro, one. we have got Lance coming to speak. Um, Who's come? Don't ask me that because I can't remember his surname. Oh, Hannah's on Lance. <laughs> we Lance. You know, Lance. Hannah, Hannah quickly message Lance's name. <laughs> oh, it's it's because he does a short post. Like, he, he's like, he, he does protests, he does talk, he does mm. music. He's, he's very informative, very inspiring. Okay. Like researcher, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, he knows his stuff. So mm. he's come in to do a, a talk at Truro. We'll be outside the cathedral at one o'clock sharp. We're not getting there early to loiter. Mm. Um, we're just going to do our stuff and go. So okay. please, come and talk, guys. Um, yeah, the mm. more the merrier. Right, so um, that's it. So you can stick your coronavirus up your ass, is it? Mm. Yeah, just oh, something. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's double LMC. Double LMC, Box and MC. Um, oh, I don't, oh, right. don't worry, we'll put it in the chat. But we've got an awesome guy. They're going to kill me for not remembering. His name. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, that's why they do that. <laughs> and, and you've got Trimigerous asking for an autograph as well. Look, and Hannah saying she'll sort sort him out one for him. Yeah, you could give them out. She said. Oh yeah. I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> thinking I could raise some money for something. <laughs> no, but I, I could do that. So that would even make me feel like an idiot. Here, buy my autograph. No, because seriously, all of that this week, it's um, I know it's a joke, but I hate anybody <laughs> that no, no, I'm no. like, look yeah. at her. She yeah. thinks that she's something special, and I, and I really mm. don't. I think you are. Yeah. I'm not. Sure. You are, babe. We want your autograph. <laughs> shut up. Shut up. I got mine. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah. I can't mind. I was the first one ever. Oh my god! I'm gonna fake it. <laughs> God's sake! Right, you can stick stinky masks up your ass. One, oh, no, coronavirus. oh sorry, coronavirus. Yeah. One, two, three. You can stick your coronavirus up your ass. You can stick your coronavirus up your ass. You can stick your coronavirus. Singing, we are the ninety nine percent. Singing, we are the ninety nine percent. Singing, we are the ninety nine percent. Together, we are mighty. We are the ninety nine percent. Woo! Night and God bless everyone. See you this same time next week. Thanks, Louise, very much.